Pep should be coming by. So this is the shaping room. For keeping like the tradition and things, for me it's just about from where I've grown up and who I've been surrounded by and learning about their history and where they've come from and really kind of looking at it as far as San Diego goes as being in a position to keep that tradition going. There's not too many other people in the position that I've been very fortunate to, to be in. So keeping it alive and making people remember, you know, because all the old guys would tell us the stories about when they grew up and how they got to where they were at. So it's just kind of continuing in the line of, of everybody that I've been influenced from. Look at, well, inch to inch to zero wedge. <laughs> I just did the, the stock that the, we looked at, that six in the nose and three and five eighths in the tail. But yeah, have fun. Shape, wow. shape one up. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. I got one too, so we'll, maybe we'll vibe on what we're gonna build them. Now you can make a big, big. All right. I'm not chasing building 11 foot boards because I can make more money. It's like I ride, I've been riding these things for almost 20 years now. So for me, it's just an extension of the boards I grew up riding with other influences and then putting those together and creating something unique uh, that way. These are all my old fries, kind of like original skippers. This is my first fry. And then, then the first board I ever shaped second board I ever shapes down there. This was a board that, this is the original Skosh model. So I, I, I foiled it, cut it out, and then Skip finished it. And he ended up giving it back to me. We, having grown up with those guys that kind of created so much of the history in the industry of surf, building surfboards here in San Diego, about how they had to pay their dues to be able to get to where they were at, that's kind of going away now with the advent of you know, machine shaping and, and Instagram and social media. I mean, it's really changed. The scary part about that is kids aren't wanting to learn how to sand boards or polish boards or laminate. And so really, it's, there's not a big pool of people that have the skills to be able to build quality boards. So it's gonna be a dying art for sure. That's kind of the graveyard. My new board. Spoiled out. I ride these this size, 6'8", all the time, yeah. We come into the laminating room. So Mondays are gloss day. Yeah, all the wet works in here are fins, hot coat gloss, laminate. These are New York boards, I think. I don't want, don't want to touch them. They're all fresh. I've always said, well, more now that I'm older, San Diego's kind of the womb of a lot of surf culture and history, like period, like from day one. And just growing up in Pacific Beach with who I grew up around and the older guys who were all had certain parts of that history, like they created it. So to be that close to it, I think it's more impactful on you growing up. And so not that I'm anywhere close to a legend like those guys are, but maybe I can help continue so that San Diego doesn't get whitewashed and, and lose its track of its own culture. So I'm just trying to keep it to how, like the building blocks of the, how I grew up and keep it, you know, traditional, handcrafted and, and, and high quality.